Yes, right. All right, guys, so check it out. Here we go. So I really appreciate you guys dealing with shenanigans that I do and drawing all this ridiculous stuff because I know that the majority of you guys learned absolutely nothing yesterday. Okay? Now, I want to tell you why I understand that. It took us yesterday to get all of these things written down. What's going to happen is this comprehension light bulb is just going to explode this week. Um, you guys are, are this today, and then next week, you're going to roll through a lot of chemistry stuff. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish up from yesterday, and you guys are going to have a really good understanding of electron configuration and the orbital diagram, which you probably have no understanding of right now. So let's, uh, let's catch up on that mess. <clears throat> Here we go. So first thing, yesterday you guys drew, you guys drew these orbital shapes, right? But look down the side of my tree. I don't think I had anybody write orbital shapes down there. Okay. This is a tree. Yes. It's a forest. Supa, oh. panda, oh destroys forest. Okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> I know, you guys, there's some simplicity here that's not so simplistic. Okay. All right, you guys, so now there's that. Um, so you guys, we look, we still have our work from yesterday, but mostly we're going to be working in our area here to here to here to here today. So I'm going to zoom in, okay? Slide this guy over. Okay, so everybody should know exactly where we are on this guy, okay? All right, I'm gonna slide this down just a little bit and talk to you guys about it. Now, um, remember you guys, Mulan sucks. Wait, no, we're just saying Hun's rule. Okay, wait, what's Hun's rule? Uh, this, if it goes up, it goes down. Okay, yeah, we'll talk about that, ready? Hun's rule states that in this box here, um, we, have our, we have our electrons. And it goes in one up, and then because the orbital spin of electrons is opposite, then we have one down, okay? It also states that we have one level full, then the next level full, until we get to what we call a degenerate level. And in that one, it's gonna go up, up, and up, and then it's gonna go down, down, and down. That's Hun's rule, okay? Once again, you're like, thanks for telling me that. It still means nothing to me. It'll make a lot more sense when we figure out how to use these diagrams, okay? So, just to get back in on this, I want to show you guys how we fill out this diagram the rest of the way. Okay? So, I'm going to go back to my blue here. And the spinning wheel of death. Okay, cool. Alright, so check it out. We went through here, we had the 1S level. Then we went up to 2S level. Now look, this tree is like running along at this weird angle, right? That's how you guys use this. We have 1S, angle up. 2S, angle up to what? 2P, right? Okay? And then we have 3s, and then we're going to go 3p. Okay? Now, I want to point that out. These lines go up, but on off balls diagram over here, off balls diagram, the lines go down. Okay? And so we're going to fill these in. So if we're going this way, we get done with 2p. Okay? So over here, we come down from 2p to what? To 3s. So now we're going to go 3s. And we're going to have an electron that goes what? Down. Up. And then down. down. Okay? All right. And then from 3s, we jump over to what? 3p. 3p. Okay? And so we're going to go up. And we're going to go up. Because this is a degenerate level. And up. So we have three ups. And then what are we going to have? Three downs. So we go down. 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 Okay? From 3P, we jump to 4S. So from 3P, follow the arrows, we jump to 4S, right? So we have one up and then one down. Okay? Then from 4S, we jump to, there you go, you got it. 3D is over here. This is a degenerate level, but it's unique because how many boxes does it have? Five. Now understand that these shells or orbitals don't actually have boxes, these just represent places that electrons live. And because they share a similar energy level, we're going to go up, 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 and up, and then we're going to go down, 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 and down. Okay. So now this is your orbital diagram box, completely filled out for now, okay? And this is, uh, over here we have our off -ba, um guy filled out, and that's to help us find electron configuration, so now you guys can totally do that. 
about we learn how to do that. You guys ready? Okay. So you still think you don't know anything, but I'm going to tie it all together. I'm going to learn real quick how to do this. Okay, so electron configuration. I want the electron configuration for hydrogen. So right here, we're going to draw a little H. Okay. And the electron configuration for hydrogen, chemists are going to use the Aufbau diagram to figure out what it is. So we look at this, the arrow goes down. What is the atomic number for hydrogen? One. So how many protons is it going to have? One. Okay, how many electrons? One. Here we go, ready? I use this arrow. Oh, if I only have one, I get one S one. Now, I'm going to just draw the orbital box for hydrogen. Okay? So I have hydrogen again. Okay? And this is going to equal the orbital diagram is going to be a box with one up arrow in it. Okay. Did that make any sense to anybody? Yes. Okay, I got three yeses and a bunch of what? Okay, so that's okay. We're going to move forward on this one, okay? So we're going to do B next. We're going to do B next. So we have B. What's B? Boron. Okay, and so now we're going to do the electron configuration for it using Aufbau's diagram here, okay? Ready? So we're going to go through this area, and so we're going to have a 1s. Now there's two electrons that land in here, so we're going to go 2. So your first thing is 1s2. But then we start the next arrow and go down, and we get 2s2. And then we're going to go to the next one, which is 2p, and we're going to write 2p. How many electrons are in that p one? How many guys are totally lost now? That's totally OK. Ready? OK, so let's back up. I'm going to just slide over here and ignore the one we're working on, and I'm going to go over to orbitals. Okay, so the orbital diagram for boron. We have a square here. What's in the box? An up arrow and a down arrow. How many electrons is that? Two. Okay. What's our second box look like? One up, one down. Now, what's our next set of boxes going to look like? How many are there? There's three boxes. And then how many electrons are in these three boxes? One. Why? Boron has five electrons. Now looking at the electron box, you guys can see one, two, three, four, five. And you can see that this is the 1s level, this is the 2s level, and this is the 2p level. So when we go over here, we write 1s2, because there's two electrons in it, okay? And then we go to 2s2, because there's two electrons in this one. And then we go to p, but there's only one electron. So we write 2p1. Now, while you're processing this and writing it down, I just want to remind you guys that um, we had originally taught you how to do math, okay? And we started teaching you how to do math with your fingers. So you could do everything up to 10. Because I could say, you know, what's 3 plus 7? You could do your fingers. 1, 2, 3. And then you could do 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and you could say 10, right? And everything was great. Until you got past 10, then you got to take off your shoes. Right, okay, so anyways, you got comfortable with that. And then we're like, well, you know what? It sucks to count things. Let's multiply. And you hated multiplying. Okay, but then we decide, hey, you know what? Instead of going 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, you know what? 10 times 10 is a lot easier because it's 100. And then when you got comfortable with that, we were like, let's talk about square roots and cube roots. And you hated your life again, but you realized that adding 10 and 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 10 until you get like 10 to the 10 where the, yeah, right? It's easier to use cube and square roots, right? But it wasn't at first. So here's the deal. Last week I spent this whole time teaching you basic chemistry and we could find things like what's the atomic symbol, how many protons, how many electrons, how many neutrons, what's the mass of this one, okay? Uh, where do the electrons live in these shells? Now we're taking it up to our A game and I'm teaching you the multiplication and square roots and everything else of chemistry, okay? So when someone talks about what the electrons are doing, they're going to ask you to do an electron configuration. How many of you guys are starting to get an understanding of how this works? All right, so we're going to do neon next. Do you guys want to do the box, or the, the orbital diagram first, or do you want to do the electron configuration first? You want to do orbitals, right? Okay. So this is like that in between. This is multiplication. Okay. All right. So neon is what? What's the symbol? Ne. Okay. What's the atomic number for neon? Ten. So how many electrons is it going to have? Ten. It'll probably have ten, right? So here we go. We're going to do our boxes. So. 
We know that we're going to have one box with two, another box with two, and then we're going to have a three box. And guess how many electrons are going to be in there? Well, six. six, right? So we can fill this out. So we always, we follow Hun's rule, and we're going to do up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, down, down. Are we done? Yes. Yes. This is the orbital diagram for neon. So now let's use Offbaugh's chart to write down the electron configuration for neon. Any, here we go, okay? We're gonna start here, we're gonna roll our way down. So we have one S, so we have one S, how many electrons in this one? Two. two. Then we have the next one, which is two S. So we have two S, how many? Two. two. Okay, and then we're gonna jump over here and we get to, to two P. So we're gonna go two P, and how many are on there? Six. Six. Is everybody happy with this? 10 seconds ago, you guys did not know how to do any of this. Look how we're, roll, how we're rolling through now, okay? All right, so this works a little bit. Okay, question. Okay, so basically to find these though, you have to know the atomic mass. You do, you have to, the atomic, number. not mass, the atomic number. The atomic. Okay, which is the number of protons. And we're assuming that that means they have the same number of electrons. Okay, now just to make this a little harder. What if something was a cation or an anion? What would that mean? Cations give away a what? Positive. They're, they're positive, so they gave away an, an electron. And then anions are negative. negative, so they've picked up an extra electron. So what's crazy is if I start talking to you on a higher level about here's this element, it's a cation of this element, could you draw the electron configuration for it. You guys could, okay? But let's just practice something here because I want to show you one more now, okay? All right, so let me get through this one and then I'll answer the next question, okay? All right, so what's the element after neon? Sodium. What's the um, symbol for sodium? N A. Okay, so looking at sodium, we're going to use off boss. We're not going to go to the boxes yet. We'll check it with the boxes, but let's use off boss chart, okay? First, we have 1s. Is it completely full? So we have 1s2, okay? Then we go to 2s, right? And we have 2s. Is it completely full? 2, okay? Then we come back over here to this side, and we go 2p. 2p what? 6, because it's full, okay? And then we go to 3s, and it's 3 S what? One. One. Okay, so that's correct, but let's check it with our boxes. Okay? All right, so we have Na. All right, so we have a box here, a box here, our three boxes here. And then what do we got next? Uh, five boxes. Is it five boxes or just one box? Just one box, yeah. Just one box, there you go. That's where this gets a little difficult, okay? And then so we're gonna fill it out using Hun's rules. So we're gonna do it right. So we're gonna go up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, 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 and then up. So how many total electrons is this? 11, okay? All right, you guys, now what's funny is, are you guys starting to see how long this can go? So the trick here is with orbitals, you're just gonna learn the pattern, okay? Um, with this guy though, we're gonna learn a cheater, okay? Can you imagine, what is element number 48? What is, what is element number 48? Isn't it like 248? Yeah, we gotta like, it's far away. I don't even know. It's, it's just a mess, right? It's far away. Can you imagine writing out the electron configuration for that? So we found a way to cheat to shorten this. We can shorthand it, and we use the noble gas as the shorthand. So every time you get to a noble gas end, you can restart your electron configuration. So we could write Na down as uh, Na blah 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 blah, or you guys can do brackets. 
And you can put NE. What's NE again? Neon. Neon. And neon happens to be a noble gas. So you can put any noble gas in here. You can put any noble gas in here. So looking at these two electron configuration drawings, we have NE and we have NA. What's the difference? 3S1. So we can draw boxed in or, or uh, uh, bracketed in NE, and then you just draw 3S1. That is the electron configuration for NA. Okay, but so is this. Okay, now what's weird is you guys, this is just a pattern. You're not going to really know how to do this until we practice and practice and practice. Okay, so I just want to give you guys a heads up on this. Some of your brains are really processing, and I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things that we see from what we've done on the periodic table. Okay, one is I've just had you outlining chapters and drawing this dumb picture for almost two weeks. Right? Okay, so a couple things we've got to talk about this. Once you figure out these patterns, it's going to help you out. One of the patterns we're looking at is Supa Panda Destroys Forest. Okay, these re represent the sub-levels. Okay, so now I'm going to start comparing things and asking you sciencey questions about chemistry. I want everyone to find lithium. What is the atomic number for lithium? Three. 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 Okay, cool. All right, so you guys, so find Li. Is lithium is three. All right, so first thing is, I could ask you a very simplistic question like, what is the atomic symbol for lithium? Li. Li. But what's funny is a bunch of you will get it wrong when you write it in Moodle. Why? Ah, because you either capitalize the I or don't capitalize the L. But I am going to have no remorse because when you write a symbol, the rules say that first letters, second letters, very good. Okay, cool. Now, I might up the ante and say, okay, can you tell me how many protons lithium has? Three. Can you tell me how many neutrons lithium has? Wait for it. Think about it. So someone said about four, which is correct, but we're going to go with four. Okay, now remember we talked about isotopes. Isotopes mean that we have carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14, and it's because sometimes in nature um, we don't have other things, okay? All right, we don't have these guys. Now, um, so we know that we take the atomic what and subtract out the atomic number? Atomic mass. The atomic mass, okay? All right, now, knowing that lithium is not a cation or an anion, how many electrons is it going to have? Three, because we have three protons, which are positive. And then we have three electrons, which are negative. Okay, cool. So you guys starting to get this? Now what's funny is I can ask you guys a lot harder questions. Okay? So we can start looking at this, and I could ask you, what's the atomic mass for lithium? Okay, so what's really crazy is, what if I asked you, what's the atomic mass for water? Well, let's see. Is it adding two or is it adding three? So there's two hydrogen and one oxygen. So hydrogen, what's the atomic mass for hydrogen? It's, it's like what? It's one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for just now, even though you'll do it better later, we'll just say one. And there's how many of them? So that's how much so far? Two. And then what's oxygen? 15 point. So you guys would say 16. So if you guys told me 18 would be the atomic mass of water, I would say good job. Okay? All right, so now we're going to get to harder and harder things. On Monday, I'm going to teach you guys stoichiometry. Now, the funny thing is I already taught it to you. You just don't know it. Okay, so we are going to be doing dimensional analysis, which is a fancy word for stoichiometry. Or maybe stoichiometry is a fancy word for dimensional analysis. If I told you we were going to figure out how much oxygen we needed to make a bunch of water, and I told you we had 48 grams of um, hydrogen, then you might need to figure out how much oxygen you need. That seems really hard, right? It's not. You're going to transfer grams to molecule or grams to moles, okay? And you have to use the atomic mass for that. Do you have the atomic mass? <coughs> yes, you do. Okay. Now, moles to moles is a really weird thing because I have to give you guys the right ratios, the atomic ratios, or the molecular ratios, which you guys are all freaking out about, but you already know what they are. Can you balance a typical equation? What do we put in front of the um, symbols to balance an equation? You guys, the coefficients are the molecular ratios. So if it says one, two, one, one, two, one. 
If it says two, two, four, two, two, four, whatever it is, whatever you have to do to balance those out, those are the molecular ratios. Now, we have to take it from uh, molar mass now, or sorry, we have to take it from uh, molar mass. Now we have to take it to molecules. Okay, actually, sorry, we went to moles. Moles to molecules. What's the magic number we use for that? It's an Avogadro. Guess what, guys? You already know how to balance equations. You already know how to read the periodic table. You guys already know how to do stoichiometry. We just have to practice a little bit. Okay, now let's talk about these stupid symbols because I'm gonna back this up a little bit and I wanna make sure that you guys understand what you understand, okay? If we look at this, this side gives you guys a table for, um, this gives you guys a table for off uh, or I'm sorry, off boss diagram, okay? This guy gives you a table for orbitals. This guy tells you shapes, right? So if I was to ask you lithium, what sub-level is lithium in? That's one of four answers. Okay, so ready? I'm going to slide up here. I'm going to show you guys this periodic table. Hey, look at this periodic table. These guys, which are, let's see, not that one, this one. Okay, these guys, so lithium's right here, right? All of these guys plus helium are here. They're S's, right? So it's S. So how about if I ask you what shape is the electron configuration for lithium. It's spherical, or I would accept a circle. Okay, do you guys see how much you guys know now? You guys know a ton of stuff, and I'm not gonna take this away from you guys. You're able to test with this. Okay, now I will tell you, your final at the end of the year, I won't let you use it. So, but by then, yeah, your final this time, you can. Because we just learned this stuff. We're not going to have enough time to practice all of it um, before you guys take your final. But the final at the end of the year, there's only going to be maybe 12 chemistry questions, and you will have a periodic table there, but you won't have the crazy one that I had to draw. Okay? All right, so you guys understand how this is related to the periodic table. You understand how these guys are related to the periods and groups. You guys understand how this guy's related to this guy. And you understand how we have S, P, D, and F levels, which is why we have a crazy panda on here. Okay? You guys understand how to balance simple and complex equations. Okay, you guys know how to draw molecular models. You guys know that even though I taught you guys this for your electron shells, it's not accurate anymore, right? It's still accurate to tell us the number of electrons in it and the um, period that it's in, right? But now we understand that they're not all circles, right? Um, you guys understand how each of these groups behave because of some ridiculous notions, okay? You guys understand the difference between Bohr model and Lewis dot structure. Okay, Bohr model is the drawing or molecular drawing equivalent of electron configuration because we're counting for all the electrons, right? But what we're really dealing with is the equivalent here is if this, was, if this is Bohr model, then what model is this? Lewis dot because what's the only thing we're worried about? It's the valence electrons. Oh, also, you guys know what valence electrons are. Anybody just surprised at how much chemistry you actually know? Okay, so you guys, it's, it's blowing your mind, okay? So I appreciate you guys trusting me on this. Um, we're gonna start doing stoichiometry um, for today. Um, you guys have what left for homework? 7.5. 7 .5. It's your last outline before Christmas, and we're gonna do a lot of outline slash work on this. One last thing. Some of you guys learned by all my ridiculousness, okay? How am I meeting the needs of people who don't learn from my ridiculousness? I've been doing the outlines. How many of you guys come to lecture, watch the ridiculous, read the outlines, and all of a sudden it makes sense? How many of you guys make, read the outlines, and then all of a sudden the lectures make sense? Okay, you guys really should be picking this up quick. Now, here's the last thing on this. When I grade this, it's gonna be worth like 50 points, okay? It's like a project grade, okay? When I grade it, I'm just looking for things. So example would be orbital shapes. If you don't like the way I did this, you can just draw the orbital shapes somewhere else on the page, and you'll still get points for having orbital shapes, okay? Um, if you guys don't like the fact that my orbital diagram is on the slanted line, let me explain why it's on a slanted line. These guys go up, right? How many electrons can we handle in the diagram I had you draw? Has anybody figured that out yet? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 30. What element is 30? Zinc. This only goes to zinc. The trick here is, if I extended this out and just kept going and just kept going, I could do all the levels and they would follow up in the same pattern. It just gets crazy. It just gets more and more and more, okay? And so you're gonna get to your D levels, which uh, your D sub guys, which have five, 
But if you get all the way to your F ones, they're going to have seven boxes, which means how many electrons go into them? 14, right? Welcome back. Okay. All right, you guys, if you guys do that, bam, 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 this thing would be ginormous, right? And it's actually not important that you know this. It's important that you know there's a pattern. Okay? But once again, if you wanted to draw the whole thing out, you could find a space to put it on here. And as long as it's there, I'm going to grade you for having it. So some of you guys are going to modify this. Now, I will tell you one last thing. We're going to put our stuff in here. Um, this area is going to be used for some of our um, stoichiometry. And, it, and we also are going to add some little things um, for Avogadro's number and moles, uh, grams to moles, some different things on that. But once again, this is your math. And make it however it works for you. Cool questions on that mess? Okay, as the questions come up, I'll answer them. You guys are doing a really good job, and I appreciate you guys uh, staying with it, okay? Outline 7.5.